Hi, you guys. This is Nicole from My Carolina Garden. I garden in Growing Zone 8B, and I am in southeastern North Carolina. It is a cold day today, but it is going to get a lot worse tomorrow. So I wanted to take you around the yard today. I want to show you some things that are actually starting to wake up in the garden already. But also, I want to talk about microclimates. We very, very often talk about growing zones for plants and in what growing zone they can thrive in or not, but we don't often talk about microclimates and they are actually really important. So what the heck is a microclimate? A microclimate is just a localized little area, like a small section of your yard, let's say. Think about like one little area in your garden as compared to your whole property. Something is happening there that actually makes the growing environment different than the whole rest of your yard. Maybe it is sun exposure. Maybe it is wind protection. Somehow the air temperature or the humidity, something is differing in this area that could either give a plant an advantage or a disadvantage. Advantage. And I want to show you some examples of the microclimates that are happening in my yard right now. And then we're going to walk around and just take a look at some of the other things that are actually waking up because let's face it, that's exciting. So you probably recognize this area as my rock garden, even though of course it doesn't look as colorful as we we're used to. The rocks are still in there holding down the fort for us right now. But let me get right in close to this rock right here and that's the first microclimate I wanna show you. So right in this spot, I have the Lanai Twister Pink um, Verbena. It's a trailing verbena and you can see right here that a lot of it has really died back and maybe little tiny leaves are starting to come out on this one in particular. But then this one, closer to this rock that I have, is actually budding in multiple places and blooming. And that's not the first bloom that I've seen. So the Lanai Twister Pink Verbena is actually a perennial in zones nine through 11. I'm in zone eight B. So technically we're kind of on a line of where it could be perennial, but it would make you really wonder how this plant is doing so well and staying alive through the winter here. So it's not like it's dying back and coming out. It's actually staying alive, budding and blooming. And like I said, those are not the first blooms I've seen this year. So that's where microclimates come into play. This boulder right here soaks in the heat of the day and actually retains the heat so well that it's keeping the plants that are beside it warm. So it's keeping the verbena warm enough to have it continue to grow, continue to throw up new buds and bloom throughout the winter. So that is an amazing example and I have more to show you. Heat in this case is what is happening with this boulder right here. So at first you may think, why do I care about microclimates? Can I use them in my yard? The answer is yes, you can. And there are advantages to doing that. One of the advantage is you can actually extend your growing season. If you think about planting near like a brick wall or a patio or boulders like this, those items that are just absorbing that heat and retaining it for the plants nearby can help you or allow you to plant something a little bit earlier and also keep it a little bit longer into the fall. Think about maybe even planting tomatoes in an area like this near a south facing wall where that warmth is just being absorbed in that space really can help that plant to thrive. One of the other factors in your yard that could create a microclimate besides like what we're talking about here, like absorbing the warmth or sun exposure or something like that would be elevation. And elevation to me is almost comical because I live in coastal North Carolina where we are flat, flat, flat. We live at sea level here and we don't have any elevation to speak of. But actually even minor elevations in your property, like things that you're building up on a hill versus having something sit in into a dip in your yard, that makes a difference as well. Colder air actually settles in low spots. So avoid planting frost sensitive plants in these lower spots and instead plant them raised up. Maybe it's in a raised bed. Maybe it's just in something that you elevate. If you have a low spot in the yard, maybe that's where you want to plant a hardy perennial and just avoid like your sensitive tropical babies. Don't put them in the lower spots that can collect that cold air.
Even though this area looks horrible right now, I'm going to show you anyway. I have this hydrangea bush right here that is right beside my back patio and the back of my house. And you can see that we are beginning to leaf out on this plant. And that is because it is also in a protected spot back here. We're protected more from wind. You can see a lot of different buds on many of these branches here. But again, we're protected from wind right here and also having this concrete patio right beside it helps to retain some heat. And so boom, boom, we are off to an earlier start for this guy. In my front yard, I just wanna give you one more example of a microclimate. This also has to do with the rock, my beloved rocks. I have the purple heart plant that is planted right here where you can see so much of it has died back as it should because it that's what it does in the winter. It does not like the cold at all. But you can see when we're close to the rock, we have not only pieces of the plant that are alive, but they're also their purple color. Different moisture levels also create different microclimates. So like we're talking about patios and things like that. Patios that are retaining the heat might make a plant dry out faster. So if we have things like concrete patios or stepping stones or a, an area with a lot more sand in our soil, those areas would be better for like drought tolerant plants that can take that drying out stuff a lot easier. So maybe we're gonna put our sedum there, we're gonna put our lavender there, things like that. Whereas lower spots or shadier spots certainly are going to be holding that moisture in, retaining that moisture, and they're gonna make it more suitable for something like a hosta, for example, or a fern. So we, when we think about our yards, yeah, we're thinking about what growing zone we live in, of course, but then we have those little pockets of the microclimates throughout our yard that you may sit there and wonder, why isn't my hosta doing that great over here? That could be the reason why. It just might not have enough moisture or shade to give it the perfect balance it's looking for. So little adjustments could make all the difference to those plants. Okay, so we've seen some different microclimates in my yard and some different things happening. Now let's just look at some things that are waking up already and it feels so crazy. But right here, can you see all of this green popping up here? These are daylilies. I have daylilies all over my yard that are all beginning to show a lot of green. So even though these daylilies aren't going to bloom until summertime, you can see how tough this foliage is because it's already coming up. And speaking of tough, this is a bad on my part because I dug this daylily out of the ground in the fall and I meant to transplant it out into my Island of Misfit toys and I just didn't get around to doing it. But you can see it's not actually even in this pot, it's just sitting above it. This is the root ball right here. And look at this, it's still starting its new growth. So this is a tough, tough plant right here. Another plant that is really showing me its aliveness right now is this Dianthus. Now Dianthus can be hardy in much colder zones, like up to zone three, depending on what variety it is. Now Dianthus is also like carnations, or you might have heard it called pinks. There are a lot of varieties of it. This one in particular was labeled annual when I bought it from my garden center last year. So it's very frustrating at times because you're thinking, okay, it's only gonna be an annual. Here we are throughout the entire winter, we're still green and all these little magenta specks that you see are all flowers. So the Dianthus is a spring bloomer anyway, so it's not entirely surprising, where it's like seeing daylilies popping out of the ground when you know it's not gonna bloom until summer. That seems a little more strange. Nevertheless, I have some blooming Dianthus. Now the cascading rock sedum definitely has lost some of its petals. Like it's got that rosette style to it and it definitely looks a little more leggier this time of year. But all things considered, I mean, it's still alive and it's the coloring on it is still good. So it's just an interesting thing to point out because I have another sedum that I wanna show you. We're in my secret garden right now and another sedum is my autumn joy right here. There's this whole section of green where I have all this autumn joy sedum popping up. Now, I don't grow autumn joy sedum as successfully as so many of you do. I see so many people with these huge mounds and I think, how are they doing that? And I thought maybe it was just like 
too sunny or too hot or something during the summer. I still don't know the answer, but I keep getting pieces like from my mom each year and I'm like, okay, I'll try it in this section and see if it works. And then all of a sudden this is happening. So now I'm like, does it like to be a little colder maybe, or is this unusual? Well, I don't know, but I have Autumn Joy Sedum here. And one more thing behind me I want to show you. These right here are canna lilies. Can you see the green that's showing up? I did show you in a video recently other cannas that I had popping up in the ground, and I knew that they were going to be goners. As soon as this cold weather comes, those guys are going to be done. But this is what happens. As soon as the weather warms up for even a few days, you start to see little shoots of canna lilies pop up. Same or something similar happens with my banana trees. But then that new green growth just dies back again when the whole cold weather comes through for another spell. Well, this guy, since it's in a pot, and I don't remember exactly which variety of canna this was, but it was something different I had gotten, different colors in the foliage. I think it was speckled red and orange or something. Because it's in a pot, I think I'm gonna move this into the greenhouse and protect it during this cold spell that's coming up because I'd rather this growth not have to start over. So that's my thought on this one. So I just brought my pot of cannas inside the greenhouse and I took this pot of begonias out. Now, begonias are mostly annuals. They are hardy zones nine through 11, so that doesn't include me. I have overwintered my begonias for the last couple of years and it does give them a head start for the year and it also just saves me money so I don't have to keep buying the same begonias over and over again. Well, what I'm gonna do now though is actually take this pot apart and put these guys into multiple bigger pots so they can start to expand a little more because I wanna actually add some begonias into my landscape this year, like into the ground instead of just in pots. So I wanna give them the extra growing time now while it's still winter and things are still gonna be protected inside anyway. So that's the next job I'm gonna get up to, but hopefully the information about microclimates is helpful to you and research it a little bit more if you think that you want to increase the growing time, like the growing season for some of your more tender plants or something like that. Because it really is interesting to walk around your yard and see what's growing or thriving or blooming when you didn't think it would be. Okay, you guys, spring is coming. Spring is coming. I keep reminding ourselves of that. And until next time, happy planting.